Hey guys, we're starting off today's vlog with a little sit down portion where we're gonna discuss embroidery things. A few people have asked recently if we've made enough profits from the embroidery to pay off the embroidery machines yet, cause we have two. We do all our embroidery in house. I have my husband running the machines in the back room there. And we've been doing this for about a year now. I think it's a little under a year since I dropped the strawberry sweatshirts, which were the first item, but we've had the first machine for over a year now. Second machine for less than a year. And that was such a huge investment for the business. So let's do a breakdown of how much money I've made from embroidered goods versus how much money I've spent on all this embroidery stuff. So first I'm gonna overlay info for sales from embroidered goods. This is in US dollars and it's sales as in money I've received from those orders. It does not factor in any expenses yet. And despite having done only four embroidery designs so far, this is a long list because at one point I split up my listings. I originally had all the color variants in one listing and then I split them apart to be separate and so not everything is fully lumped together. So the first value where it says straw, that was the original strawberry sales before I split the listing. And same thing with Luna right below. That was pre-listing split. So then it says stuff like plum Luna, black Luna, navy strawberry, sandstone is strawberry. They're all split up like that. And you can also see little duckies in there and three bunnies. Those are the t-shirts. Then we have the ad sleeve because for a while I had an optional add-on where you could add embroidery to the strawberry sleeves, but it was too much of a hassle. So I just had them pre-made with the sleeve stitched. We had too many variants for that first strawberry thing. There's hoodie and crew neck. There was sandstone and pink, sleeve or no sleeve, plus the option to add on the sleeve. It was a bit much. So then with Luna Moth, I was like, all right, one color. But of course, 4XL, 5XL are different colors because I can't get the same blanks in those colors. So there's a lot of variants. <laughs> So at the end of it all, I've pulled in 77,327 US dollars from the sweatshirts. And so that converts to about 100,525 Canadian dollars. And so I took that 100,000 and I cut it in half to see my profit margin. And that's a bit of an estimate because the profit margin is not always the same on every garment. Certain sizes can cost more money. It depends what exact blank I'm using. Is it a hoodie? Is it a crew neck? There are different prices. But my profit margin is about 50% on the sweatshirts. And then for the t-shirts, it's a little bit more. But for the sake of this estimate, I just assumed 50%. So realistically, it's a bit of a conservative estimate. My profit margin is probably a little higher than 50,000, but that's pretty accurate. It's pretty close. Now that only factors in the cost of everything used to make the sweatshirt. So the blanks, the thread, the stabilizer, the plastic sleeve it goes into, that's the only thing it's factoring in. There are a bunch of other f expenses involved in running a business, like the boxes and packing supplies I use, like freebie sticker, thank you card, subscriptions for shipping software, even just like the labor, because I hire Christian to make them. I do not factor in the labor in this calculation. That is really just based off of materials used. So about 50,000 Canadian dollars. Now moving over to the expenses side, this is all in Canadian dollars because these numbers are pulled from my bank account and credit card. And I might've missed some things here, but this is most of it. <laughs> and I would say my number one expense by far is the cost of the blanks, but that's not in this expense list because we factored that into the profit margin of the sweatshirts. But I've purchased so many blanks that I've not sold yet. Like we bought all the Halloween stuff I haven't sold yet. And then there's still a bunch of Luna Moths. There's some strawberry sweatshirts. There's more of the t-shirts too. There's more stock sitting on the shelf that is not sold. So my expenses are astronomically higher than this list here. But this list is more so the fixed expenses. So I consider these numbers my startup cost for the embroidery business. And then all the blanks and thread and consumables are excluded from this. Although some of these are technically consumables. But anyway, let's make our way down the list. <laughs> right at the top, we have the machines. Machine number one was more expensive than machine number two because I got a whole bunch of accessories with it. The machines are Melco EMT 16 Xs. So the first one has extra expenses. Like I got a whole bunch of mighty hoops. Those are pricey. I got some hooping stations. I got the Melco fast clamp system, which was over $1,300. So things like that made the first machine more expensive because I wasn't buying just the machine. And I got those from Embroidery Systems Canada. Next is Wilcom, which is the digitizing software. Did I need full-blown Wilcom? No, probably not. That's like the big boy software in embroidery. I probably could have just gotten away with Melco Design Shop, but I just wanted it, okay? I just wanted Wilcom. So Wilcom retails for 4,000 US dollars. I got it half off. They were doing a deal where if you, you traded in your old embroidery software, you'd get half off. 
and I said I didn't have anything to trade in, they gave me the half off anyway. So it worked out to about 3,000 Canadian dollars, which is a lot. Next is computer, because the Melco machines run off a computer, which I love. I don't like how a lot of other machines have just a little screen you gotta go through. I hate that. It runs off an actual computer. Now, did I need a computer this fancy? No, not at all. <laughs> you don't need a fancy computer to run these machines, but I wanted a fancy computer so it could do everything. I wanted that computer to be able to handle live streaming if I'm doing some kind of embroidered live. I have done them, but they're a lot of work, so I don't really do that. <laughs> also, I wanted it strong enough to be a gaming computer because Christian's gonna be in there all the time running the machines. So while they're going, he can be gaming. So if you were starting up an embroidery business, you would not need a computer like that. I just wanted one like that. Then there were the monitors for the computers, display port cables for the monitors. We got big heavy duty work tables in there. Those were quite pricey, over 1700 but they're so nice. They're great, and they don't wobble. They're sturdy. They're lovely. <laughs> I got some thread swatch booklets because I need to know what the thread's going to look like, and I got different kinds because I wasn't sure what thread I was going with initially. Got some smaller expenses on here like some scissors. I got a clothing rack, hangers, garbage can, lamps. The stacking bins, <laughs> those are pricey. That initial order was for the square clear ones, the really big square clear ones. And then later we got big rectangular black ones as well as deep rectangular clear ones. There's a variety of them. And none of them are cheap. We needed an ethernet hub for the Melco machines because they run off ethernet. A thread rack, Wilcom tutorials. Those are tutorials on how to use the Wilcom software. I bought some tutorials and I have zero regrets because it just walked me through everything step by step in order that I needed to know instead of trying to jump around online and find all the information. So that was very worth the money. The t-shirt ruler is one of the ones that sits at the neckline and kind of you measure out the center of the shirt and stuff like that. It's for aligning your designs. We had to get a Bluetooth adapter for that computer. I put some sound foam in there. I do need a lot more sound foam, but there's some of that here listed. The shirt folder, it's like a thing that folds your shirts for you and size stickers, and then below it also lists size stickers. Those are technically a consumable, but I only have to buy it maybe once a year, so I just put it on the list. Plus it was bundled with other purchases I had made from Amazon, so those are just left in there. An air gun, so we don't have to buy cans of compressed air all the time. Speaking of which, we did buy some cans of compressed air that are not on this list. I'm sure I've missed stuff. Uh, machine oil, again, that's a consumable, but we bought a bunch of it and will be set for a long time. I bought more embroidery hoops, uh, storage totes. Those are the ones that are not the stacking bins, but they're yellow totes with a lid. And then you can stack them, but those are under the counters in there. Got some seam rippers, tweezers, the ceiling lights, more stacking bins, needles. Again, that is a consumable, but not something I need to buy too, too often. Oiling pen, wrench, because we had to get a specific size wrench for a part of the machine. More sizes of hoops. Headphones, because Christian has over-ear noise-canceling headphones in there, and an air purifier. I don't know how effective the air purifier is, but there's a lot of fabric dust that accumulates back there, so that's why it's in there. So those expenses total $60,682 Canadian. Again, not including cost of blanks, thread, stabilizer, all of that, because that has <laughs> really added up too. Like, I've spent well over 60000 on blanks alone. So my expenses are way, way higher than this. But again, this is what I just consider my fixed sort of startup costs when it comes to this embroidery thing. So looking at that, I uh, spent 60000 made back 50000 So I've paid off the machines themselves, but not the overall startup costs. But you know what? We're getting there for being pretty much less than a year in of selling embroidered stuff. That's pretty good. Some of the things on this expenses list will have to be reordered over time. But other than that, once that list is paid off, it's just pure profit after that. So I think we're doing quite well and I hope that was interesting to you. <laughs> okay, now on to the rest of the vlog. I'm filming this the same day I filmed the ending of the last vlog. It's currently Thursday, but I'm gone this weekend. So I'm trying to get up enough for Tuesday's vlog. And that's also why I included that embroidery breakdown segment at the start of this video. So it's currently quarter after three. I just finished packing up orders and I now need to do a couple things. One, I wanna make the packing tape for 
packing orders, like the tape that goes on the outside of the box. I wanna make a Halloween tape and then get that ordered right away because that usually takes a few weeks to be made, so I need to order that now. And then I wanna start digitizing the sleeve embroidery because Christian's getting close to being done the sweatshirt chests already. He's gonna catch up to me because <laughs> I don't even have all the zip up blanks yet. I did get another order in the other day because there were some of the sizes I needed back in stock. I am still really starved for size large. I have like three of them or something. <laughs> I'm waiting for the restock and I hope it comes. So Christian only has maybe a few days left of embroidering the current design on crewnecks and then I need to have my next thing ready. And I'm also gonna be doing a t-shirt so I need that digitized soon as well because the zip ups are not gonna last very long. He's gonna get through those really quickly. But we're getting down to the wire now with designing Halloween stuff, I'm almost done. There's another sticker design I want to do. I haven't done prints yet. I'm really hoping I can get the squeaky seamstress done and the ducky candle painting done in time, but I'm getting a little worried. And then of course the Halloween cats print. Oh, I need to actually order the notepads and planner pads. I've designed them, but I need to place the order. I might just do that on Monday. Yeah, I think that's it. Stickers and prints really are all I need to do and digitizing some more apparel stuff. Ooh, the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm getting it all done. I was getting worried. I'm like, I have so much stuff left to design. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, I forgot I have some editing to do first before I do the digitizing and whatnot and the tape. Also just paid an invoice I forgot to do earlier today. Okay, there's all these catio clips in my TikTok file. Did I ever make a TikTok of the catio? I don't think I did, but I've got all the clips there. Now I got most of the clips on my phone, but some of them were taken on my actual camera. So I'm looking at the thumbnails to try to figure out which of these are sideways. Oops. Mailman's here. When I'm editing vlogs, I have the video preview over here, but for TikTok, cause it's vertical, I just have a separate window over on the side. Blah, 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 gonna edit, okay. This is the pricing of the paper tape in Canadian dollars. It is not cheap. I will be ordering 10 rolls of the Halloween, which is probably too much, but I feel like five is not enough. So if I have any leftover, I can just use it next year. So $46 per roll, that's $460 worth of tape. With shipping and taxes, we're over 500, but hey, that's still cheaper than doing custom printed boxes. So it's now five o'clock. So I'm running out of time today and I would like to have a chill evening. Last night I worked into the evening and then spent my last couple hours awake watching some MILF Manor with my sister and Anthony. And that was technically chill time, but I want like video game chill time. I want to go play some Elden Ring tonight because I'm not going to get to play all weekend. But I at least want to start getting the artwork done to digitize on top of. Like I need a flat image that I bring into my digitizing software. So I'm gonna design it in Photoshop first and then it'll be ready to digitize, which I could maybe do on Monday during my live stream. But I feel like I would also need the chest design ready to do for then, so I'm not sure if we'll actually stream that. But it's a possibility depending how ready I am. And this sleeve embroidery is gonna be just the florals and it's gonna be a little reminiscent of the washi. Let me just create this file first. What? what? No, that's correct. It looks really long. But that's the sew field for the hoop I'm using. Okay, let's first of all open the washi design. It could basically be that. This is a little more detail heavy than I originally pictured. 
but that would look so good and then I don't have to <laughs> redesign something from scratch. That's gonna be a long stitch out time though. Uh, uh, uh. This just feels so long. It says the sew field's 15.2 inches tall, but it feels shorter than that. Because for some reason with this big hoop, there's a little bit of unusable space at the bottom. And I feel like this is not taking that into account. But also I want to maximize the width used if possible. Oh God, but that'd be so huge. <laughs> Plus I'm scared if it's too dense, you're going to feel it too much when you bend your arm. But boy, that would be pretty. Hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, here's the more simplified version. Still a decent amount of detail but simplified. And that was the original simplified. And the plan is to just have the one sleeve design that gets used on both sleeves without mirroring. I think it's just gonna be too complicated remembering to mirror the design each time. And I think it just needs to stay one. Plus I think it'll be kind of interesting as seen from the front if it doesn't look identical on both sleeves. So that's done. Supper's gonna be ready any second now, so I'm gonna stop here. So I don't think this is gonna be ready for Monday digitizing. I might have to do it on Tuesday, but that's still fine in terms of the timeline. Christian's not gonna be done his stuff quite yet. Oh my goodness, so cute. Okay, this next segment is not the same day, even though it looks like it because I'm wearing another ducky shirt. I have two ducky shirts and two bunny shirts. But yeah, the last clip was filmed Thursday and this is now Sunday night, Sunday evening. We went to Medicine Hat for the weekend because it was Christian's uncle and aunt's 50th wedding anniversary. And so a bunch of people were getting together for that. So we drove down for that and spent a couple nights there in Medicine Hat. And then we drove back Sunday. I cooked supper and then got to work working on stuff because I had so many orders come in over the weekend. I had 35 at the time I was filming these clips. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to get all 35 orders packed in the morning in addition to editing and everything else I need to do before the live stream. So I was like, I need to get some of these done tonight. But then there was more prep involved, like I needed to fold some boxes. I needed to replace a lost order that needed a tote bag and I had kept some extra totes. I had Christian press a couple extras just in case orders go missing. And then after a little while, I was like, okay, let's sell these extras. So I listed them and then one went missing. <laughs> so I have to make another one, just a single bag. There will be more made because I do have more blanks and more DTF transfers, but this is kind of like a discontinued thing. I don't think I'm going to keep ordering these tote bag blanks. And if I do totes in the future, I'm just going to get something custom made directly from a manufacturer, I think, instead of using blanks and the transfers. I do like the transfers, but it's like the blanks. I feel like I'm they're, they're fine. They're okay. But I kind of want to make something a little more heavy duty in the future. So... That's why I don't plan on doing this anymore. Plus the totes just take a long time to press. It's a lot of labor. And Christian's already so busy with the embroidery. Like he has some downtime sometimes between embroidery projects where he could do some pressing, but it ends up being a lot. And I just decided <laughs> let's not do this. We do enough stuff in house with the embroidery. That's enough to keep us busy. And as for the box folding, usually I make Christian do all the box folding, but I just felt bad because it was a Sunday night and we had just gotten back and he, I could tell he just wanted to chill and I feel bad being like, all right, it's Sunday night, get to work. And I was like, no, 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 I'm choosing to work. I'll just fold my own boxes. I even did somewhere to do the stamps on them, fold them up. Uh, those brown ones, they don't really need a stamp because you wouldn't really see it. I could stamp the inside flap or maybe a corner of an outside flap, but I just feel like it's not as necessary because the whole reason I'm stamping those literature mailers is because when you open it up, there's just huge blank space on the underside of it, whereas you don't have that on the brown boxes. So yeah, got some boxes folded and got that tote made so I could then go and start packing some of the orders. And the reason for the really big influx in orders is because I had mentioned in the last vlog that I'm not making any more of the Luna Moth or the strawberry sweatshirts unless for some reason I brought it back like two years from now or something when there's renewed interest. But as of right now, they're selling so slowly that I need to just clear the remaining inventory and make space on the shelf for the new stuff because we need new designs to come in. We've got a lot being made for the Halloween update. So out with the old and with the new. <laughs> And then for this tote here, I grabbed a clear sleeve for it, but the ones I had out here were only the bigger size, but I just went with it. So <laughs> it's way too big of a sleeve for this bag, but it's fine. I just folded it over, folded it over multiple times 
And that was that. And so once that was all good to go, I was like, okay, I'm gonna pack orders, but because there's so many clothing items, I'm gonna pick the clothing items first. So I did the thing where I print off a pick slip and that way I can see what clothing items are ordered in what sizes and I can go and grab those. So here I am grabbing the stuff. So we keep some of the items in the embroidery room, but there's only so much storage space in there. So we have some of the bins outside the embroidery room as well. So first I was grabbing all the strawberry stuff and then ducky t-shirts. And I have some of the sand, ducky and bunny. I have some of the sandstone sweatshirts in here, but I also had some of them in storage under the stairs. And so I left to go get those and I have to come back in because I realized some of them were still in here. It was a bit of a mess. And um, I also realized I did not list the extras I had held because I had an extra of a lot of the sweatshirts. I withheld one of each size and style in case orders went missing. And I've used up a lot of those extras. Well, not a lot, but some. <laughs> and um, I realized that the remainders had their extras not listed on the website. So I just listed a few more strawberries in both pink and sandstone because I realized I had them. I just had to redo inventory, you know, stuff changes over time. I gotta go back, recount everything and adjust the numbers. So that's what I did. So there's a little bit more listed. And I still gotta go back through the Luna Moths and do another final count just to make sure everything gets listed. But yeah, feels good clearing some stuff out. And I realized here with the Lunas, at a certain point I filled up a bin of just Luna Moth sweatshirts and I was like, wait, this is gonna be a pain in the butt to dig through this bin. Like, why didn't I just leave the Luna Moth sweatshirts on in their original bins? Because it's pretty close to my packing station and I'm just gonna be rooting through this bin trying to find everything. And I couldn't even fit all the Lunas in one bin. So I was like, what am I doing? I should have just left these. Like, sure, it makes sense to grab this stuff from the back room, but I did not have to pre-grab all the Luna sweatshirts. Plus I just didn't have the space around my packing station because I had room for one bin of t-shirts and sweatshirts and then the second bin I was like, well, this is going on the floor, I guess. And then it was overflowing and <laughs> it was not the most efficient system. But yeah, and then I got to packing orders and I got through quite a few because I did the two, I had two orders I had to send out that were replacements. And then I got through at least 15 of the new orders that had come in, which is pretty good. And yeah, for the orders that went missing that to replace, it's so weird because I've had three orders in this past week go missing and I rarely have them go missing these days. Because when I would ship with the chit chats, they would go missing a lot of the time. And part of that was because most of the international shipments did not have tracking because I would let people choose if they wanted tracking or not. And most people would forego the tracking, but then the orders would like go missing and they take, they would take so long to ship when I use chit chats. And so it's like, okay, where are they? <laughs> But anyway, now that I've switched to Canada Post, stuff does not go missing other than that one fiasco with around Christmas time, a whole bunch of stuff was delayed overseas. <laughs> anyway, for the most part, it's good. It's been good. So it's so weird that I had three go missing in one week because I don't even have three go missing in a month. Like lately, it's been maybe one order goes missing every two months, every three months. It's been very quiet on the missing order front, but suddenly three. So I packed up two, cause one of them's still in the wait and see stage at the time of filming. And so, yeah, but the other two had to get those out and yeah, just packed orders. I don't know what else to say for the rest of this. I'm just packing orders. <laughs> so yeah, this vlog was a little different than the others, but I hope you enjoyed that embroidery talking segment at the beginning. And thank you so much for all the orders that have come in and thank you for watching this video and um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, there's still like 30 seconds left. Keep talking, keep talking. Blah, 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 fill the 30 seconds. This person got a lot of little ducky stickers. It was like 18 or something, I can't remember. And so, yeah, anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. But I'm interested in turning on the lights.